Hey everybody, hope you're having a great afternoon. Um, I wanted to take a moment just to share a few thoughts with you. I started this yesterday and my desire or plan is to do this on a daily basis or real close to it anyway. And we've decided to call it Connection Chat. And the reason we've decided to call it that is because we realize that in the midst of everything that you and I are facing, everything that's going on in the world around us, that it's all the more important that we stay connected. Uh, we need to stay connected. We have to stay connected, first and foremost, to God, and secondly, to stay connected to one another. And so in these conversations, these short chats I'll be sharing with you, I'll always share God's word with us, therefore recentering our thoughts on him. And also the intention is for us to come together as a church family and as a group of believers and to connect with one another. And so it's important for us to rally around the truth of God's word together. So this afternoon, I wanted to read to you a passage of scripture found in Philippians chapter four. It's a challenge for us to consider. And uh, I think that it has a lot for us to be hopeful for, as well as opportunity to really trust in God in the midst of this season. So here, here's what it says. Paul says in Philippians chapter four, beginning in verse four, going through verse seven. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, as a kid growing up in church, we used to sing a little song, and perhaps you did too, that just were the words from verse four. It, it, it said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And it was kind of, it would go in, in, in rounds or whatever, and different groups would sing different parts, and we had a lot of fun, and we were joyful as we sang it. But to be honest with you right now, this passage of scripture, while it's true, is all the more challenging to really live out. I mean, how in the world are we supposed to rejoice in the middle of a difficult trying situation with so much uncertainty to it? We are recentered by the words of Paul here that we're to rejoice in the Lord. We don't rejoice in our circumstances. We don't rejoice in the outward things going on in our lives. Instead, we rejoice in him. And he, and he realizes that we would cha be challenged to do that in life as things come in our way. And so Paul says two times, rejoice in the Lord. And he says, again, I say rejoice. And so here is why we are to rejoice. It, it says that we're to let our reasonableness be known to everyone. So as we rejoice about God and what he's doing in our lives, and we'll be an encouragement to those around us, both those we know and those we don't. We also can be uh, rejoicing because it says the Lord is at hand. That means he's with us. He's not left us. He's not abandoned us. He is faithful. He is God with us. And then definitely, I think this next verse resonates with all of us, that we are anxious in so many different ways. And yet Paul reminds us, don't be anxious about anything. And the reason we can do that or the way we can do that is what we do instead. Instead of being anxious, it says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So I would challenge you if you've not already done this, to take time and to pray to God and let him know your anxious thoughts. Let him know what's going on. Let him know how grateful you are. Be thankful for who he is and his faithfulness to us in this season and how he has blessed us and given us salvation if you've placed your faith and trust in him. And in the middle of all of that, to come to him in prayer, to let your requests be made known to him. And then I love the promise that we have from this. That if we will let God know the things that are in our hearts and our minds, if we'll relinquish those anxious thoughts to him, it says the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My prayer for all of us, myself and you included, is that we would know and experience and see the peace of God. That this peace of God would truly surpass everything that we can think or imagine and that he will guard us in Christ Jesus. So I encourage you. Take a moment to thank God for all he's done for you. Take a moment to let him know of any anxious thoughts you have and then let his peace guard you in this moment and trust him to be faithful. Because I don't know about you, but this is a struggle every day. But as I go back to his word, I'm reminded that in him, there is peace. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us that even in the midst of difficult times like this, we can and we should and we must rejoice in you, for you are good. 
Father, I pray that you would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, that you would give us peace that only comes from you. Father, would you be with us as we know you already are, but may we experience your presence. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. If you've not experienced this peace of salvation in Jesus, reach out to me. I'd love to share with you uh, more about that. Hope that you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we connect with God and with each other. See you later.